Who is Harry Nilsson? And why is everybody talking about him? Let's find out. Don't go away. Well, hi all and welcome. Thank you for watching Rock Hard Riffs. This is the guitar channel for the self-taught and other cool stuff. Here is some more cool stuff for you. This video is about the documentary Who is Harry Nilsson and why is everybody talking about him? Now, if you're familiar if you're familiar with Harry Nilsson, you know exactly why everybody's talking about him. Because he's he was great, a true great, one of the greats. Now, also, if you are familiar with Harry Nilsson, you are most likely familiar with this movie, and that is Midnight Cowboy. What a great uh, movie. That was the first X-rated movie to, and maybe the only since, to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. So that's pretty interesting. Now, guys, you know, uh, during these type of videos, if you're not familiar with these type of uh, my channel, I don't have any crazy uh, graphics or anything. There are issues with copyrights, and uh, YouTube wisely, as they do, they try to keep an eye on uh, copyright infringements, as they should, and I understand that. So that's why I don't have a bunch of pictures, graphics, that sort of thing for you. But what we do have for you is great information, I do believe. Uh, if you do like this stuff, kind of content guys, uh, we ask please subscribe if you would. Alrighty? Now what I'm going to do right now, let's read from the back of the DVD. And I'm going to read a little from Wikipedia and I'm going to interject from time to time. The Beatles said that Harry Nilsson was their favorite American musician. Uh, Nilsson won two Grammys and was the recipient of 17 gold records, yet he is relatively unknown today. Who is Harry Nilsson? A widely entertaining, star-studded documentary tells the story of the most talented singer-songwriters in pop music history. His hits include the Grammy-winning "Everybody's Talking," "Within You," or I'm sorry, "Without You," as well as "Coconut" and "One," the song that you probably know by a Three Dog Night. Interesting story behind that, and I'll tell that as soon as I'm done with this. That's one is the loneliest number, right, guys? The film reveals how his personal life was a complex and contradictory as his music, from his spirited relationship with John Lennon to his close bond with Ringo Starr. Director John Scheinfeld paints a detailed and revelatory portrait of an extraordinary artist featuring over 50 Nilsson recordings, as well as rare or never before seen film clips, home movies, photos from the Nilsson family album, and interviews with those who knew him well. As film critic Leonard Moulton noted, Who is Harry Nelson is a vivid portrait of a gifted man. What a great reminder of his talent. That's well put. And I, I just want to add in there, as far as the song One, uh, in parentheses, is the loneliest number. How Harry Nelson came up with that was the sound of a busy signal on the phone. For those of us that remember what a busy signal sounds like, eh, eh, eh. Now just take that and make it a little more pleasant on the piano. Ding, 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 ding. And then go into the song. One is the loneliest number. Interesting tidbit, eh folks? Thought you might get into that. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Okay, now as we're looking at the back of the DVD itself, I want to read a little bit from Wikipedia uh, for you and I will interject. Okay, who is Harry Nilsson? is a documentary about the American musician Harry Nilsson that premiered at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival in 2006. It was released in theaters in September 2010. So that gives you an idea. Now there are a lot of people in this and one of the fu funniest of all, who has always been one of my favorites, is Mickey Dolenz, the drummer and singer from The Monkees. And he's, you know, the guy just always cracks me up. He's one of those people, you just look at him, they make you laugh. Uh, and many, many other people are in here. Uh, one notable person that is not in the movie is Ringo Starr. Yeah, and he, uh, Ringo, 
and Harry Nilsson were very, very close friends. And he did not want to be in the in the documentary because he said there are three people that he will not talk about in public necessarily. That's John Lennon, George Harrison, and Harry Nilsson. I thought that was a very thoughtful answer from Ringo. And uh, there's no way you can't accept that. So, anyway, here's another uh, thing that I totally agree with. Entertainment Weekly, Stephen King said of the film, Who is Harry Nilsson is some piece of work, an, expo an exploration of the dark side of success that's hard to watch and even harder to forget. I thought you that's might enjoy looking at both uh, movie covers there. We can always talk about Midnight Cowboy sometime, too, if you guys are interested in that. What a great movie. Okay, uh, Harry Nilsson was born uh, in New York in 1941. He did some interesting stuff. His biggest success was in the early 70s. I'm sure you're familiar with all his great stuff, but maybe not his great American songbook that he put together. He was the first to do that before anybody else. You know, everybody and their brother has been doing those at this time or lately. Harry Nilsson did it a long, long time ago at the, in the early 70s, and they told him not to, and it turned out to be actually fantastic. Uh, also, Harry Nilsson died in January of 1994. He was 52 years old. Harry Nilsson burnt the candle at both ends, and I really don't like talking about that because, you know, it's just the road to ruin, guys. We all know it is. The, the, the drugs and alcohol thing, this is what happens. And it's just extremely unfortunate, and I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about the positive things of Harry Nilsson. So I just want to move on from that, if that's cool with you guys. He was born really poor. His father left him when he was very young. Uh, his mother was an alcoholic. He has, again, one of those kind of, you know, semi-tragic childhoods. Uh, some people may just call that Tuesday, you know. Uh, but nevertheless, it's still difficult to deal with, and especially for a sensitive artist type, you know. And I'm not making excuses for anybody for doing what Harry did. But, you know, he just could be, just, it's just one of those things. I'm just going to leave it at that. So, also, uh, he was uh, uh, very interested in Randy Newman's music, if you weren't familiar with that. He did some really interesting stuff, like uh, The Point. It's a, an original children's story called The Point. And the big song from that was Me and My Arrow. And what a great song. And the, the, the idea and the and the... Moral of the point is very cool if you haven't seen it. It's a it's a cartoon. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, check it out sometime. It's really interesting. And I remember seeing that when I was a little, little kid. And, of course, then there's this song. Now, Harry Nilsson was known as a songwriter, right? He wrote many great songs, taught how to construct songs, etc. But he didn't write Everybody's Talking. <laughs> and it was one of his biggest hits. Kind of funny. The Beatles were also huge fans, just as musicians, of Harry Nilsson. And as we know, John Lennon and Ringo Starr were very close. Uh, Nilsson and Lennon ran around at one time during John Lennon's uh, famous um, Lost Weekend and hung around a group of people they called the Hollywood Vampires Drinking Club. Oh my, that sounds like trouble. <laughs> and if you're aware of it... It caused a lot of trouble, but John Lennon and Harry Nilsson did put an album together. John produced it, and it was Nilsson's album called Pussycats, and it was uh, in 1974. Now, also, some people tend to kind of have a problem with Harry Nilsson, or maybe not a problem. Some people just bring it up for whatever reason that he was a... After John Lennon was uh, murdered, he became a big anti-handgun activist. And some people like that about him, and some people hold that against him. I'm not going to take any opinion either way other than to say that John Lennon was one of his closest and dearest friends. He was one of Nilsson's, as so many millions of people, he was one of his mentors. And you can only imagine what John Lennon probably meant to Harry Nilsson. You know, you can only imagine, because he was a gigantic, gigantic fan before he was a friend as well. And his friend was murdered right there on the streets of where Nelson was born, right there in New York. And I, I imagine he, he was trying to reach out to John somehow by his activism, just reaching out to John. That's my opinion. That's my take. 
So I, I don't have any opinion one way or another, pro or anti-gun. It doesn't, it's not what I'm here for. It's not what these videos are about. But I have empathy and I understand where Harry Nelson is coming from. So, well guys, I really, if you weren't aware of this documentary, uh, hopefully this has made you aware and, and watch it on YouTube or wherever it is that how you can watch these things or buy it. They're available on wherever it is you buy your DVDs. I highly uh, recommend it. It can be a little slow in parts, but it is very, very good. And Harry Nelson definitely deserves uh, the attention, any attention he gets, because he was one of the great, great American songwriters and performers. He had a three and a half octave voice. Not alone just a great, great singer, but also a great songwriter and uh, just an interesting guy. <laughs> if you watch the the documentary. Interesting, interesting. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining us here at Rock Hard Riffs. I ask once again, if you like this type of video, let me know if you would please. It's really important. Let me know if you like these and I'll keep making these types of videos. Alright, thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe if you enjoyed it and we will see you next video.